Hey, how are you? <clears throat> Want to hear about this book I just read? It's really good. It's, it's a really good book. Hey, friends. Welcome back to the channel. I just finished reading Gothic today, and I thought I could tell you about it. Do you have time? Do you have time to with? Do you have time to talk with me about Philip Fricasse? Gothic's about a horror writer with a waning career who really needs a new bestseller. He just spent all the advance for a book he promised a big publisher, and he didn't deliver that book. He's got a month to deliver the book, and he's kind of at a wall. He's written books that he loves but don't sell well. His agent's on his case, and he doesn't know what he's going to do when he gets a very unexpected birthday gift that changes his trajectory forever. But if you know me, that's where I'm gonna stop because I don't like spoilers. But what I do wanna tell you about is how the book made me feel and what I think about it and the thoughts I have about how you might think of the book. If you were to read it, would I recommend it? So first of all, I love Philip Fricasse's visual writing style. He cut his teeth on writing screenplays in LA and so he's a very visual thinker and I've talked to him a few times you might have seen a couple of my interviews and I asked him about that and I think those details helping you see through your your mental camera your mental projector really helps you feel like you're in the moment and it's just certain little details that he puts in there in a very disciplined way that focuses the reader's eye and make the scene very tangible, almost. Um, I think those are important because if you if you don't handle them well, then it just reads like fan fiction and these big, fun ideas get lost in a less practiced hand. And this book is certainly a lot of fun. The horror is there. It's it's gory. It's unbelievable. <laughs> It has this strong, creepy vibe. It plays off the vulnerabilities that you get with family and friends, those connections. For some reason, I was getting strong Rosemary's Baby vibes. There's not a lot about the book with the plot or the characters that ties into Rosemary's Baby, but just something about that there's a little bit of a gaslighting thing going on between um, the main character, Tyson, and his partner, Sarah. There's a pact that Tyson enters into that he doesn't bring Sarah in. So I guess there there could be things like that that sort of set that off for me, that made me force the comparison. But it's definitely faster paced and not as suspenseful as Rosemary's Baby. It's, it's a fun, raucous horror ride. And well done, so well done. It's perfectly paced, just long enough not too long, not too short. There's a bit of history in there, so if, if you if you like some of that throwback evil stuff, you're gonna get it. <laughs> um, ancient evils coming back. Uh, just a, a raucous thing. And at the end, I think it kind of gets funny. I think the last part of the book, the final page, and then the epilogue, uh, the epilogue, and then and then there's a page after that that is cheeky and funny. I think it, it kind of gets meta at the end there. And I, I liked it. I li I think that was a fun detail. And I think uh, that's Philip Fricasse sort of winking at us in this book. I guess it felt like Rosemary's Baby teamed up with Christine to produce a line of high-end, handcrafted, devil-infused furniture. And just like Fricasse's Commodore, the ending didn't go where I thought it would go. And that's very satisfying. Um, I liked the zig when I thought it would zag. You gotta appreciate that. Fricassi seems to take a little, a few more risks than other authors. And they pay off. There are definitely themes of addiction and obsession. The rise and fall of celebrity, grief and loss. But there's also no wasted time here on sentimentality. I think... What really clicked with me, and I, I thought not too many authors do this, but the obsession is total for Tyson. There's there's not this protracted wrestling of good and evil within Tyson Parks. He's sort of taken into the whole 
packed with the bad players. And I'm 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 talking like a weirdo because I don't want to spoil the plot. But I did like that the obsession was total, and um, there wasn't a whole lot of oh, there's a struggle, and oh, which way is he gonna go? And I think that's been done so many times. It's more satisfying to see it just happen. I, I remember when I when I saw Taken and Liam Neeson just kick the shit out of everybody. And it was like not even a contest. And it was so refreshing because there's so many fighting movies where the, the hero gets knocked down. He's got some blood and it looks like it's a give and take and there's a little bit of conflict. No, you just want to see the hero go in and lay everybody to waste. And it's kind of the same vibe with this book to a degree of sorts maybe read it yourself and find out but you got to be sharp because this book is coming out first as a limited edition from earthling it's going to be a small print run of 250 so i'm kind of shooting myself in the foot here by giving you guys a head up because i'm going to be somebody who wants to compete for one of those books i need number five I'm putting that out there right now so it's it's recorded it's part of the internet history right so it'll be signed and numbered. It'll have some fun, cool Chadborn art. I have it on good authority that this Chadborn art is the signature page art. So it's not the cover. Um, this arc is one of very few. And I was very happy to read it. And I was thrilled to not damage it like I did the Boys in the Valley arc that I'll never forgive myself for. So you see how that works? So get on the... Earthling Publications newsletter, they're going to be announcing this in short order. So you're going to need to get on there and, and order a copy and compete with Beef Daddy. That's okay. I want this to, and it will sell out. It's going to sell out super fast. I don't think um, whatever day it goes live for pre-order, it's not going to last a second day. Whether that means it goes out in 30 minutes or two hours or 12, um, I, I can't say, but I'm definitely getting one to match my number five of Boys in the Valley. So um, I'm going to be there. I suggest you be fast is, is my advice to you. I'm writing you a prescription for an addiction to books. That's almost a jingle. So I can be Dr. Jeff. Dr. Jeff, writing you a prescription for your addiction to books. Hit me up if you want to buy some jingles. And Jingles sounds like a gigolo clown name. Hello, I'm Jingles, the gigolo clown. Want a balloon animal? <laughs> Jingles, the gigolo clown. He'll get you up when you're down. See? These just roll out. He'll get you up when you're down. Oh, Jingles. What won't you do for money? Get the book, read the book, enjoy the book. fracassi has got a lot of stuff coming out. Up next on my TBR from Fracassi is, um, what is it going to be? Is Don't Let Them Get You Down. This is coming out from Zagava. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it um, next. It's my next Fracassi to read. I think it's more literary, dark literary fiction. And I'm up for that. I think that is just what Beef Daddy needs. So um, I'm going to read it and review it for you like I did this. <clears throat> and you can get that from Zagava. Why not? Why wait for my review? I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. I've, I've loved everything I've read from Philip Fricasi. So um, I, th I hope you will too. He's a hot commodity right now. Hot commodity. Auto-tune that. Make it go viral, please. Check you next time. Peace! Should that replace Stay Frosty? I felt like I needed to do that with this backwards hat thing going on. But I don't think I will. So, um, anyway, my Frosty babies, stay frosty. So, if you made it through that entire nonsensical review, then you may have realized I didn't even give it a star rating. So, I'm giving it a star rating right now. And that star rating is 4.5 stars for Gothic, 
Thank you for watching. 4.5 stars. 4.5 stars.